Hello guys, welcome to my channel Knowledge Transfer. In today's topic, I will be covering what is supplier refund in Oracle Fusion Accounts Payable. So, uh, let me brief about supplier refund. So, whenever you are going to take a service from the supplier, let's say you have given an advance to them. And later, if you are not taking any service from that particular supplier, so you will be asking for a refund of that particular amount. So that how we used to configure in our system and how the Oracle OFC react in our uh, system, we will have a look on that. So let me give some more example and for, because it is a small topic, it will not take much time in system. So let me talk about the process and how and when we used to handle this supplier refund. There's a supplier refund. So in my previous, <clears throat> so in, in my previous video, I had covered some of the prepayments like uh, temporary prepayment and permanent prepayment. So let's take an example of permanent prepayment. Prepayment. Okay. So you have taken, uh, you have given an advance to a supplier of 20,000 and later on you had uh, taken service from the supplier, okay, service from the supplier of let's say 10,000 for which you had make a payment because it was a permanent prepayment so whatever you, the services you are taking from the supplier you are making a payment on that you are not adjusting it into a prepayment so you had make a payment on 10000 okay prepayment correct so you have taken service of 10000 making a payment of uh, 10000 so it doesn't make any sense still we have 20000 advance to our particular supplier later on what happened like you had confirmed with you with your organization that you are not going to take a, any kind of services from a supplier let's say this supplier is abc so your organization has decided that you will they will not be going to take any further services from the supplier that is abc abc supplier no more services Correct. So in that case, you do have 20,000, which is left to the supplier and that you need to take it back from the supplier as you are not going to take any services from the supplier doesn't make any sense that you will be keeping 20,000 as a, like as a whole to the supplier. So what we will do is we will see how we gonna treat this all scenario. So firstly, Firstly, what we will do is we will create a dummy invoice. Okay. I will not be creating. I am just showing you the process. Uh, dummy invoice of 20,000 and apply to the prepayment. Why we are doing this? We are doing this so that the open, open prepayment, whatever the open prepayment was, it will be close with a dummy invoice okay so mm, okay let me this will be close with this 20000 so these two are close this and this are close but we we should be recording some 20000 right like 20000 we are getting it from the supplier we are not going to make a payment to the supplier right so 20000 this is close this is close now we will see how we will be treating it in accounts payable and how we are managing like uh, to take back 20000 from the supplier so for that scenario, what we will be doing is we will be creating a credit memo okay, of minus 20,000. What we are doing is 
see any if anything is in the positive sign means we are going to make a payment to the supplier but if anything is in the negative sign anything is in the negative sign supplier will be making a payment to us this is how in OFC we used to do so creating a credit memo of negative sign and whenever you are going to create a payment on that okay you will be selecting a type select a payment type as a refund so refund of minus twenty thousand so this is how we used to configure or we used to uh, like make a process or create a process in Oracle Fusion accounts payable during the time of a supplier refund. So I had given you a scenario like this can be a prepayment and like advance you had given it to the supplier and later on you are not going to take a service from that particular supplier. In that case, we need to close that prepayment with the dummy invoices and create a credit memo of negative sign to, against that particular supplier and create a payment as a refund. This is how we used to treat. I hope it was clear. And for creating a prepayment and how to apply a particular invoices to that particular prepayment, I am not going to show that. Why? Just because I think so. I had covered a prepayment. Yes. I had covered a prepayment in, in my previous video. Please have a look on that. And in case if you have any kind of issues or any kind of doubts, feel free to like uh, drop into a comment box. I'll look into it and I will make a proper detailing video on that. So what we're going to do is this part, I will not be going to create prepayment and making a dummy invoices and applying to the prepayment doesn't make any sense if you don't have any prepayment and this is just an example so i will not be going to create it i will just be going to show you the process how to create a minus credit memo in negative sign and during our time of prepay uh, during the time of payment we will be selecting the time pass refund so let's create a credit memo of minus twenty thousand. Payables, create an invoice. Hope you guys are practicing hard. And if you need any kind of instant support, like dummy instant support, feel free to drop me into a comment box and I will be providing you a dummy instance for practicing it. But you need to go through the process of chart of accounts, how to create a chart of accounts, like rapid implementations and all this. So chart of accounts, creating segments, deploying chart of accounts, all this I had covered in my in my previous video. You can go through that. And for rapid implementation, I don't think so. I had covered any kind of video till now. But in future, I'm planning, planning to do that. Let's take this one as refund. Okay. Zero zero one of let's say minus twenty thousand. Type will be credit memo. That's the reason I we have selected it as minus okay. Then now I give it into the lines minus twenty thousand. Select the distribution code, validate the invoice. Once it is validated, I will be showing you how to make a payment and select a type as refund. So as we can see, let me copy this number. 
So as we can see, invoice has been validated. So based upon that, we will be creating a payment. Create a payment. Select the BU. Select the party in supplier. So here we are changing the type. So the type we need to select as the ribbon. Then select the disbursement account. Give the payment document numbers. Let's say give it one. Select the invoice. We okay. This is the refund one. Apply. Okay. Here it is showing as 18,000. Maybe we have tested the withholding tax scenario or any kind of interest versus anything which is conflicting this testing. So this is the process. While practicing it, you can disable all the withholding taxes or interest invoices, whichever you have enabled it and do a testing on in, the, in this because this is not a complicated scenario. And you can proceed with further like save and close. And this is how in Oracle OFC, see, then we used to figure out how to handle the supplier refund. So hope you find it a bit interesting as it is quite simple topic and doesn't take much time. So during the time of practice, I will suggest you guys create a prepayment. Okay, create a prepayment as a permanent prepayment. What do you do is close that prepayment with a dummy invoices. So this, this is gone. And no need to do a service and all this is, this is, this will be coming into a part of like prepayment topics. Ignore it. Just create a permanent prepayment, close that permanent prepayment with a dummy invoices and later on create a created memo and select uh, during the time of payment, select the type as refund minus done. This is how prepay, uh, supplier refund work. I'm trying to figure out what are the topics I can cover some more in accounts payable. And I will try to find some more one, two topic like FBDI and all. FBDI and all I was planning to cover later, like uh, when I will be completing accounts receivable scenarios, fixed asset, cash management. When I will be covering all this, all this, then I will be taking separate topic like uh, how to upload bank branch, how to upload um, statements, how um, we do have like uh, upload of BAI2 format, dummy BAI2, I can create it. So I will show you how to create a dummy BAI2, upload it, and uh, FBDI like um, open transaction, how to load, this type of things I will show you. Um, then customer upload, supplier master data. This type of things I will be showing it. Journal invoices, everything. Whichever I can cover it up, I will be covering all the FBDI later on. And there will be a separate session, like three, four sessions of FBDI. FBDI of GL, FBDI of AP, FBDI of AR, FBDI of like uh, cash management, anything. So... Thanks for watching this video and let me know if you are getting some interesting topic which you want me to cover it out. I will try to figure it out that topic and if there is any patch update or any any kind of release, any kind of release like uh, new new scenarios like recently they had uh, uh, they had a release like asset approval then one more to topic they had released like asset transfer between the corporate book. So this type of topic i will be trying to cover it out i used to practice those but uh, as it was it is a part of a fixed asset which i haven't covered yet so i am not covering that topic so mostly one more to one two more topic is left with the accounts payable then we can proceed further with the accounts receivables so if anyone is watching all these videos make sure that you are watching the accounts receivables, basic setups as well, just because when I, whenever I am going to start accounts receivables process, it should sync with you.
like it should be syncing with you that scenarios and all from where it is picking these accounts this type of silly silly things you will be able to pick it up very easily so thank you don't forget to like subscribe and share this video thank you